Good morning and welcome. We begin our service by greeting each other in the name of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins, and make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As forgiven people we sing to the glory of God.
Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person, that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our thought first letter comes from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. I consider that the sufferings of this present age are not worth comparing with the glory that is about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in the hope that creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay, and will obtain the freedoms of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now. Not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is already seen? But if we hope for what we do not yet see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now come to a hymn that will be new to you. Um, often when we have fertility plays in schools and in churches, um, the angels will be these pretty little girls in white dresses with wings. Um, but in the Bible, when an angel appears to, to people, quite often one of the first things they say is, don't be afraid which clearly means the angels in the Bible are not the little girls looking very sweet in their little dresses, uh, but something slightly more um, uh, scary than that. So this, this hymn was sort of a reflection on that, um, some of the instances where angels said, don't be afraid. Um, just make sure you've got the tune, Patrick's going to play it through once, and then stop, and then completely start again. So the first time through, we just listen to the tune. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither reap nor sow, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the fields, how they, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. For if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not so much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will I eat, or what will I drink, or what will I wear? For it is the gentle Gentiles who strive after all these things. And indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But if you strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about today, tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We live in a world, in a country, where many people are worried about um, getting through the winter, having enough money to keep the heating on. Um, it's been very cold in recent weeks and may continue to be cold, but I haven't seen the long-term forecast. Keeping your house warm in a cold climate costs money, and this winter it is costing considerably more than winters in years past and as many people are struggling. In the shops food has gone up in price quite substantially. Barriers to trade to bring food into the country that um, exists um, are putting prices up. Many people are struggling to make ends meet. We now live in the background of strikes and disputes over pay as people struggle to make ends meet. And it seems quite difficult in such a world for Jesus to be telling us, don't worry, don't worry about life, what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear. He doesn't mention heating, there were much warmer climate where he was. Um, but many of the problems remain the same. Part of his message is whatever we're facing, God is with us. We are not alone in what we face. Part of his wider message is that there is enough to go round. God has given humanity enough to feed everyone, to keep everyone safe and warm and fed and clothed. Part of the problem is we do not always share out evenly, fairly, what we have. Oxfam have recently published a report that shows over the last couple of years the richest 1% in the world had their wealth grow by almost double um, the amount by which the other 99% had their wealth grow. And within that 99% are people whose wealth shrank, who are finding it harder to make ends meet than ever before. There is plenty of money plenty of food, plenty of other resources. We need to ensure that everyone gets enough. That is a challenge for this country and for the whole world. We can pray for fairness, but we need to ask those who make decisions to turn those prayers into action. Part of Paul's message this morning is that God cares about everyone, each one of us, everyone in our country, but also everyone in other countries, everyone
everyone throughout the world. When Paul says this, he is not standing out on a limb, proclaiming a message that is separate from the rest of the Bible, but is at the heart of what the biblical message, what God's relationship with the world tells us. The story of Je Genesis, the story of our creation, tells us that we were all made in God's image. John's revelation at the other end of the Bible talks about people of every language and tribe, every nation of the world being gathered in front of God's throne, everyone being gathered there, representatives of every people in the world that we can imagine will be gathered there. God cares about everyone. We are all made in his image. And elsewhere in the Bible, Jesus talks about how he is the shepherd of the flock, but there are other sheep of other flocks yet to be gathered in. When he came to the people of Israel, he was already looking beyond its boundaries to the rest of us. So as we face the challenges this winter, one piece of reassurance for each one of us is that God loves us, God is with us, God cares for us. And if everyone in the world loved each other, cared for each other, in the way that God does, none of us will have a problem. Lord God, we pray for the world. We pray that its resources may be shared out fairly between all who need. We pray for those who have more than they need, that they may see your face in those who surround them who are desperate. We pray for those who do not have enough, that they may be recognised, they may be valued, and they may be supported by those who can help them. Lord God, we pray for equality of opportunity and resources in our world. Help us to turn that prayer into action. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our second hymn is God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year.
let us pray to the God who knows us so well and understands our needs. Lord, in all the daily concerns of parish life and in the great issues facing the whole church, may we never lose sight of your priorities, but see everything through the eyes of compassion, with integrity and honesty. Lord of creation, let your kingdom come. Lord, in the local issues of this community, and in the difficulties and dilemmas on the world stage, may we look for the face of Christ and fix our attention on his underlying values of love, justice and mercy. Lord of creation, let your kingdom come. Lord, in all the minor squabbles and the major rifts of family life, May we know the assurance of your promise to be with us always and your power to transform and renew. Lord of creation, let your kingdom come. Lord, in the shock of sudden illness and pain and in the wearing endurance of long-term weakness, give your peace and tranquility, your healing and hope. Lord of creation, let your kingdom come. Lord, through the journey of death and in the grieving of those who mourn, gather us up into the everlasting arms of love and comfort us and bring us to life in all its fullness. Lord of creation, let your kingdom come. Lord, we thank you that we can trust you completely and you never let us down. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, and we'll sing it twice. Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you all and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.